day I dragged the love of my life to see this tiny waterfall. And when we got home, my embodied pant pattern was in from the plotted pattern. So I thought I'd share how I sewed it. First, I begin making my welts for my welt pockets. You can make them any shape you want. Here you can see that I made myself a little template to make them kind of scalloped. And after I sewed the two layers together, I clipped off all the bulk and then clipped my curves. The pocket in the pattern has two like petal shaped welts and it is really cute. Um, but I wanted to do something a little different because I've made that before and I also wanted to kind of share a hack, if you will. Um, you can, like I said, make the welt any shape you want, give yourself a unique style, um, you can like mimic the style of your fabric. My fabric has kind of these little pin dots, so I thought that this scallop would be really cute and go along with the whole vibe of it. Also, I include some manifestation tips in the instructions, but I wanted to share some more here. Um, such as writing a love note in your pocket welt for yourself to add an intention that you're really grazing this intention every time you put your hand in your pocket. Or also putting a crystal inside the welt that can enhance feelings of positivity or absorb negativity as well. Once you sew your welt pockets, you're going to turn them right side out. And here I am massaging the seam to kind of pull out the crease. Um, I want that seam line to be really crisp, so I'm using my fingers to kind of um, gently press it out. And then I add a little heat, keep working it, and then I'm going to really um, give it some heat and steam to keep it in that shape even after I wash it. Um, heat and steam are important here to make sure that things don't go awry after you wear and wash these a couple of times. Now I have my uh, rectangle pocket openings traced onto both the pocket and the pant panel and I'm matching up the corners perfectly making sure that everything is together and then I move my pins out some so that they're actually securing those the rectangle together and also just so that I don't sew over these pins because that will not help me get a smooth line. Now we're going to sew around that rectangle. At each corner, you're going to leave the needle down and lift the foot up and then pivot to the next straight line. Every time I say pivot, I think of my mom's favorite friends episode <laughs> where they're moving the couch. Um, so at each corner, we pause ex as close as we can to the exact corner. Leave your needle down. Lift the foot up and then turn. This stops there from being any distortion. Um, it's like a nice crisp corner. If you tried to just continuously sew, it would make a mess, I promise you. Once I get to the last leg of this rectangle, as you can see, I kind of started in the middle. I'm going to go back, instead of trying to backstitch or something that creates bulk, I'm just going to, oh, I did backstitch there. <laughs> Um, do as I say, not as I do. Just overlap your stitch lines a little bit so that you um, don't create excess bulk, but you still secure that rectangle. Now you want to cut it open. I cut it open through the middle and then snip to but not through the corners. I want to get as close as possible without what am I doing? Get as close as possible without damaging the stitch line because I don't want any fraying. Um, but the closer you can get to the corner, the least distortion you'll have when you flip this out.
Okay, now we're putting the pocket through the hole and turning it out. <laughs> Cleaning up my sewing area. <laughs> and now you can see where we're going here. You're going to do kind of the same thing you did with the welt and massage the seam line out. Adding a slight finger press helps find the right fold so that once you press it, um, you have the iron to it, you don't have to like get your fingers in there. So I'm starting with the bottom corners and just kind of making sure that I'm folding right to the seam line. Then again, heat, steam, all important here because you don't want the wash to distort your pocket or just wearing it. Um, to distort things. So I keep adjusting. I gave it a little heat so that my finger fold would have a little more strength. Um, and now I'm putting a lot more heat on it, really working out those corners. Um, you can see they kind of pull where I maybe could have snipped closer, but you know, working them with the iron a little bit will help smooth that out. You can also press this open hard from the inside between the seams but as you can see I still had to it wasn't like exactly the seam line for some reason I think it's just because there was so many layers underneath so I still had to use my fingers to work out that fold now we are pinning the welt to the seam allowance inside the pocket of course the welt is going to show through the outside but we want to make sure that it's fully secured on the inside in this case some welt instructions have you like make sure that your welt is between the layers in this case um, because there's already so much bulk I wasn't super concerned with it and so it'll be inside the pocket Then we're adding the pocket bag all around the edges, the bottom edge of the pocket. And it's pretty much done. I'm securing all the layers around the welt so that I can top stitch it without, you know, again, distorting it, changing anything. So first thing I'm doing is top stitching around the opening of it. I want to keep it as straight as I can. If the color matches, you won't see it super well, but you know, I know it's there. <laughs> and that's just around the top and those two side legs. Then I am going to switch to a very tight zigzag stitch so that I can bar tack the sides of the welt to the edge of the pocket opening. That just secures things. I don't want my welt flapping and flopping. Um, I want it to be like nice and smooth when I stick my hand in the pocket. I'm just cleaning up. You can kind of see where I created that long bar tack. And guess we got to refill now. <laughs> Once the welts are done, we just cart start constructing the pants as usual um, sewing the inseams and then we're going to trim down the seam allowance toward the front toward the back it says in the instructions I swear and then you're going to fold the other side of the seam allowance over the trimmed side so that you're creating a welted um, seam finish and you're going to repeat it as best you can on the out seam as well. This pant pattern has a side zip, so one side of your pants you'll be able to um, flat fell it all the way down the edge, and then the other side you will stop um, just above the hip so that you can insert your zipper. The flat felling, a lot of my patterns have the flat felling because it really um, secures things. It keeps everything looking nice and clean on the inside. It 
is very strong seam because you're adding the seam allowance is adding strength to the original seam line because you're backing it then we are going to add in your zipper basically using regular zipper instructions using a zipper foot to stitch the zipper down um, as close to the teeth as possible I have the opening basted shut here just so that I'm making sure everything's smooth and then once you get to you have to cross your um, your zipper pull so you'll have to like tug at it and pull it or just you know stop your stitching pull the zipper foot or the zipper pull out of the way and then restart and overlap your stitching so to secure it either way it's not a big deal I don't like to like I feel like I might scratch the bottom of my presser foot if I try and mess with the zipper too much um, so I don't like to do that And as you can see, I'm opening up my basting, tugging on my, a little bit so I can tug my zipper pull out of the way and comically fight with it. There we go. So now the rest of the zipper is smooth. I'll just overlap a little bit um, and have a nice clean stitch line down the rest of the zipper. All zipper packages include zipper instructions it doesn't really change much they're much easier than they seem to put in here i am using a um, tan jeans zipper because i am not a small woman and i want to make sure that my zipper doesn't bust so after you get your zipper in you're going to open up or, I'm sorry, you're going to top stitch your zipper down. So you still want to use the zipper foot, that way you're pushing against it. You're going to sew down one side, get to the bottom of the opening, bottom of the opening. And then, once you get to the bottom opening, you're going to do the same thing you did before and pivot to make a rectangle. I think I'm struggling here to make sure my zipper and my um, my seam allowances are, you know, nice and flat. So once I get to the bottom of the zipper opening, I'm going to pivot, sew straight. I am going to be very careful here. Um, it might be easier to use the hand wheel on your sewing machine to go over the teeth. That way you don't, you know, bust a needle. Um, because it's the worst place to break a needle. And then pivot again and go back up the other side of the zipper. It's basted here so that you make sure that your zipper closes evenly on both sides of the zipper um, once you're done because you don't want it to be uneven or like pulling on one side. we get back up to the top I am going to try and move my zipper foot it really is very very difficult sometimes to move it um, you know the top stitching makes it hard to like stop and start so just do the best you can to do the rise you're gonna turn one leg right side out and stick it inside of the inside out leg And then I, so I sewed the inseam, I flat felt it, and now this pattern also has cutouts along the side of the leg, so I am cutting out that cutout. I didn't cut it beforehand because I didn't want it to fray or anything, so I waited until I was almost done to fully cut it out. Now I'm going to bind this little leg keyhole with just some um, bias tape that I have on hand. Okay. 
I'm gonna stitch it at a pretty small seam allowance and then roll it back um, stitch it again and trim it in this case I didn't like how it looked this fabric has a little bit of stretch to it so I actually did a zigzag stitch all around um, I used the bias to kind of bulk up that edge and then I did a zigzag all around and added a button to the edge the button is just sewn on the leg has enough opening that you don't need to unbutton it so it's just a sewn on button it doesn't open or anything I hope that you enjoyed this process it does pretty closely follow the instructions um, but sometimes it's nice to have a visual as well so I did have to make some fit updates once I added the internal waistband, I realized that I wanted to make some fit changes, so be sure to subscribe so that you can catch that video next week. Um, in the meantime, if you want to try this embodied pants pattern, you can find it on my website at paperanchor.co. I'm really excited to share it. I do everything myself, and I really hope you enjoy it.